In last week's episode, we discuss how insurance is like your life raft and you need to make sure it works properly in any crisis situation. In this week's episode, we tell you how we can no longer stand to be boatless and we take the steps to buy a new boat. So join us on the next adventure. Well, hi guys, it's Ali here. And it's been a couple of weeks since I've seen you and I've been missed apparently. And might I say that I've missed you too. (laughs) But I've taken a couple of weeks break because a boat burnt. Yeah, I've, I've had to just kind of reset and recalibrate and figure out um, what I needed to do as well as recover. So it's been a few weeks now and um, we're not one to cry over spilt milk for too long, so it's, it's time to make decisions. So like in any situation in life where you find yourself in adversity or in a situation you're not really happy with, then you know, you've got two choices. You can either kick and scream and be angry about it, or you can say, all right, well, from here where I stand, what can I do? Um, where can I go, what are my options, and and start making some changes and to start moving forward. Otherwise, you just keep being stuck. So it's time to make some changes and it's time to move forward. And we don't know how long it's gonna be before we get another boat. Boats are really hard to get right now. So it's kind of like, well, what is our options? What, you know, what are we gonna do? And what I do know is that we don't wanna be stuck without a boat for too long. We want to get out there on the water. So let's look at our options. Our options really are to, to, to buy something while we're here in Australia, while we're in between what we do next with our next boat. So John and I have talked about getting a little trailer sailor that we can just hook on the back of the ute and we can just drive up the road or drive to the nice spots and it not take us too long, splash it and potter around in a little trailer sailor. Something small, something that is going to be easy to sell for when we are able to get that next boat. So that's kind of what we're thinking right now. So really excited to see John because he is on his way driving a thousand kilometers to come to be by my side again. So we'll be together soon. Pretty excited about that. Well there's a few different trailer sailors around but the one that springs to mind that we like that we've seen it out actually when we've been sailing is the McGregor. And we didn't know much about the McGregor, but we've done some investigating and they seem to tick a few boxes. For instance, um, the McGregor M, which is about 26 foot, it's got quite good headroom and I'm so tall, I need that headroom, clearly. Um, it's got good space inside. It's, it's got, um, usually they've got like a little uh, porta potty um, and a little settee and a little kitchen and things like that. So enough that if you're out for even a week, you know, you're able to be comfortable enough. Um, So we've checked out the little McGregor's trailer sailor and there's a pretty big McGregor community out there uh, we've come to realize as well, which is pretty cool. You can also put a fairly decent sized motor on the back. So if the weather's not doing what it should be doing, you can always just turn the key and and motor. So some of them are up to 60 horsepower um, engines on the back of a little sailboat. So it's kind of a bit weird, but yeah, that might work and obviously it does. And the other thing is that this, if you have a good engine on the back, some of them go up to 15 to 20 knots. So that's pretty amazing. They also have a ballast that you fill up the bottom with um, just with seawater so that then when you go to put it on the trailer, you can let the water out and it's a lot lighter when you go to to put it on the trailer. So that seems to work okay. Um, So it'll be really interesting. I'm really excited to go and check it out. 
a far cry from Ultra Dash. Yes, I know, but hey, if it gets us out on the water, and you know, at the end of the day, we can still go to those really lovely places that we love to go and sit on the beach, just like we would if we were in a flashboat, and have a bonfire, just like we would, and swim in the water, just like we would. So come with us and have a look at this McGregor anyway. So if you do like this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free so you can keep up to date with the journey because um, it's an interesting one. It's a hard thing to know That you're so design boats um, they stopped production some years ago because the owner died but, but that, not before he hadn't made like about 30,000 of, of them yeah yeah they were producing them one every four hours when it was in production and they've been very popular and obviously they've gone all around the world it's slightly unusual because they're able to motor at fairly high speeds mm. for, for what we're doing that also means if we want to get home or if we want to get somewhere fast if the weather's turning bad you just put the power on and you can uh, get there quickly They're, they're pretty unique. I mean, it's a custom-made thing. I have oh, right. seen other boats with it on. Uh -huh. um, it's really solid and really, uh -huh. really well made. It only weighs 1.7 uh -huh. um, ton. This lure is really deceptive, isn't it? You come down and you look at, you think that's. Another table. So the fridge is good, it works really well. Oh yeah, it's a good brand anyway, isn't it? Yeah. And then this backrest comes off this uh, seat here. It's an easy access oh, yeah. to the thing. But yeah. the galley slides forward. So if you don't like the fridge in that location, you can take that wooden tray out that it's sitting in. Oh yeah. Two, and you tuck the screw to hold it. Uh -huh. and you can slide the whole galley forward, and then you can move the fridge back there. So it gives you a few options. Uh -huh. uh, it's got shore power as well. It's got an inverter just under there. Uh, under this another, thing? Another two batteries that aren't connected at the moment. So you just undo those two bolts, yeah, push it down. Yeah, plenty of storage. And if you look under, if you go, oh, and then if you go forward where it says life jackets and you pick up that cushion, there's a hatch there. And you'll see the little bung. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, you take that out to let the water flow in. Exactly. Yeah. And then once you, when the water starts overflowing, how you close it? Just close it. Yeah, it just starts bubbling out, and then you close it, and you close this one, and you go sailing. When you want to take the water out again, you just open that one, and it runs out. It won't run back in again. It's about 540 kilos. That, and see that that bulkhead there? Yeah. That's where the dagger board drops down. Oh, this thing. Yeah. It's in there. Yeah. And you just control it here. So. Yeah, you just pull it up and down here. Oh, it's real easy. So when I first saw that, I thought, oh, this thing's going to make a lot of leeway, but it doesn't. Probably less than you can. <laughs> the whole thing's really stable when it's up. Um, so pull that off if you want.
second trip to Ellie Beach to have a look at this McGregor 26 to make a decision about buying it. Yeah, because we really just want a little boat that we can drive somewhere, have a trailer on the back, back it into a river or a creek or a, okay. a slip. And look at the region that we're in, Yeah. but then drive quickly somewhere else. Yeah several hundred miles away if necessary so yeah. it can also do a boat this size can also do those little islands offshore as well <laughs> yeah we might have to call it mini dash as our son suggested yes. So McGregor 26 on a trailer, it can go into shallow water, it can go up creeks, we can beach it, um, it, we can drive it to nice places and we can motor it at fairly high speed, 15 knots at least, if we need to get out of trouble or if we want to go home fast, so we can use it as a caravan as well, just drive it down the coast. So we think we'll be able to go to some of the really nice places up and down the coast that we have not fully explored. Hopefully we'll get lots of fun out of it. Anyway, we're going to put it on our YouTube channel so you can see how we deal with a trailer sailor, a little dinky McGregor yeah. trailer sailor. Yeah, so it should be fun. It should be. It should be great fun. We'll deal with the um, controversy also that surrounds oh, McGregor's yeah. because there's a bit of controversy, but they're a really popular boat and they sell like wildlife. So well, the other thing for us is if we want to sell it, it'll be very easy to sell down the track. So. Yeah. And at, always reassuring. And at least, you know, we're not going to pass judgment on it until we've owned one ourselves and we've actually been out in it and we can compare apples with apples. So, so what are we doing? We are taking, uh, hopefully, taking the uh, McGregor 26 for the first launch and this is the first drive we've had with it in uh, with this car which is a diesel Nissan Navara. But we've never done this before, we've never launched a trailer. We're uh, actually trailer seller virgins, aren't we? We are. Yeah, so um, it's very exciting. <laughs> Let you know how that all goes. We're going to put the rig up and everything here. Yeah. So. Made it. <laughs> First leg. <laughs> okay. So, here we are. We made it to the Mackay Marina. It's very blustery today. No, no, no. This, so this is the air outlet. So water's coming in the bottom. You hear the air? Yeah. And you keep on letting the air out until the whole thing fills up with water. Mm -hmm. So now you can see the water that just come in there. I want to just test to see how much it blows sideways and stuff like that. Just a little bit of maneuvering to see how it handles it. The 
comes Minnie Dash on her maiden motor. She's going in this pen here. Lucky, lucky, no neighbours. So guys, here we are in our trailer sailor and we've pulled everything up and out of the bed in front, which I'll show you. And we're waiting for the guy to come and access the batteries, which are under there and also under there. So we're living in chaos. Well, a few hours. For a few hours. But anyway, this is boat life. <laughs> Gotta love it. So just when you thought it was safe, he has now got to fit another, pretty much exactly the same barbecue that we had on the Leopard 50. He's now having Groundhog Day and having to fit it again. Oh, but this is much easier. <laughs> on this boat. Okay, so the cleaning process for this, this is the carpet cleaner. What we do is this is like a squeegee bottle with a scrubber and we put it on it's a bucket of water the pool needs to be damp and not wet voila looks a lot better than it did before it's not dry yet obviously stand it up in the setting sun okay guys so some people want to know what it's really like to have a boat and everyday stuff. Well, we bought the boat a few days ago and well, for a couple of days we've been cleaning and trying to sort out things that didn't work. And here is a typical process of cleaning. And my honey is happy, happy, happy. Aren't we having we, such a lot of fun? We are having a wonderful time, at least. We have done carpet cleaning and we've got all the um, mold and ickiness away if there was any mold and dust and everything. So, so we have, what would you call this, carpet cleaned all the walls with this high. The foam carpet cleaner. And so at least we're getting rid of all the dust and all the mold and everything that would be in a second hand boat. Yeah. It's awfully fun. And this we have done all the rest of the boat apart from the fore peak. So this is just the end. And as I was finishing up for the evening, I thought, oh, maybe we should photograph this. So just to give you some perspective, as we look around the boat, Elizabeth started with these pillars at the front, both sides. They're all dry now, lovely. And then went down all the all the um, carpet on that side of the boat. Uh, so this is the dining room table of the saloon table, and we have carpet all the way back into the aft cabin which is back there but you can see it's actually quite a lot this is a queen size bed which is a very big bed more carpet at the back there all the way around the back and at the sides another unique feature of the mcgregor is the sliding um unit but of course unfortunately behind that we have more carpet da, 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 da. and there is the carpet cleaner we've been scrubbing that on first Elizabeth's been coming around behind with the foam sponge and water and so how do you enjoy sailing honey isn't this lovely you, this is what you do as a sailor love 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 <laughs> there we go so what time is it now I think it's time for a cup of tea yeah the sun's over the yard arm I reckon it's probably about 4.30 in the afternoon. I think it's more like five, honey. But, cup of tea? Cup of tea, yes please. Or a glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Tough call. <laughs> now, we, we had a very, an exceptionally nice 
bottle of wine. Mm. Oh, it was lovely. Did we bring it? We did. Hang on, I'll find it. Yes. So Elizabeth opened up that hatch and although we did clean this out before, what did you say? It's full of water. Full of water again. Now we know there's a leak with and, and, and it's fresh. And so Elizabeth tastes it because she loves drinking water out of the bilges. <laughs> But that's a bit, that's fresh. a yeah, say why. I mean, this must be obvious to most people, but because if it's fresh water, it's coming from the heavens or a, a water bladder or something that's in, in the boat, and the boat's not going to sink if it's fresh mm -hmm. water. But if it's salt water, it's coming from the bottom up, which, which or we're going it. down. So. <laughs> So that's a good sign that it's fresh water. Now it did rain heavy last night. Yeah, and we have some fittings in this cockpit that are very loose and don't have any seals. So we're thinking the water's coming from there. So we've just got to mop it up and we've just got to seal up those where it's coming in from. So this is the really nice bottle of wine. It's a Grand Burge Barossa Valley Merlot 2018 fifth generation Australian but gorgeous and there she goes working like a true professional <laughs> I've done this before <laughs> on a few different boats yeah we get up close and personal with the bilges what's that song Spent six months in a leaky boat. <laughs> One thing to keep afloat. Whoa, 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 whoa. I think it's uh, Australian crawl. Oh, no, not Australian crawl. It's Lamb or something. So nobody outside Australia will know it? No. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's one o'clock. Turn the page and burn it Let's make up a big bonfire On the beach with the stars as our lighters And throw our problems in the flame If you have liked this episode, hit the like button, subscribe for free and ding the dong so you don't miss your fix of the next exciting episode. Love and help from the Barefoot Doctors. We're gonna get over this. I see the smoke in the mirrors. I'm holding the key. One step away from salvation. You're like the ocean setting me free. Out in the open, I'm picking up speed. No bad thoughts been.